Another jet sweep. A handoff Skoranek. He's got speed. He's got the edge. He goes in untouched. Ben Skoranek. Touchdown, L.A. His first as a pro gives the Rams a lead deep in the third quarter. Hello and welcome to Rams Revealed. I'm your host, J.B. Long. Los Angeles beating Carolina to get to the bye at 3-3. Three and three. And our guest is a second-year pro receiver, Ben Skoranek, fresh off his first career touchdown, the go-ahead score deep in the third quarter to help the Rams to victory. Thanks for being here, Ben. Thanks for having me. It's your second go-round on the uh, podcast. We encourage our audience to go back to 2021 for uh, a lot more of your personal story, including your connection to Trent Green. But uh, let's get to the present day. And your first NFL touchdown. It's our NFL All Day Play of the Game. We've never led with this sponsorship before, even though the show is sponsored by NFL All Day. First of all, how would you rate the celebration? Um, I wasn't. <laughs> I didn't have anything planned, so uh, not we good. Could tell. Yeah, no yeah. Offense. No, the, the celebration <laughs> was not good. But uh, you know, next time maybe I'll I'll think of something on Saturday night before the game, and you know, I have something planned. You know what I love about it though? It was so authentic. You could see your excitement, and more importantly, you could see the excitement of those who gathered around you, like Rob Havenstein, Cup, Higby, A. Rob. Um, they loved it for you. What did it mean to kind of see it through their eyes? Yeah, those are my guys. Um, yeah, I was talking to Higby this morning about it, and it's like that was the most excited I've ever been for a touchdown. Really? And, uh, you know, Higby's been kind of taking me under his wing, um, you know, the past two years, and um, you know, A. Rob had a great block on that yeah. play, and and just you know, see the excitement out of the guys, um, you know, it, it means a lot to me, and you know, those are guys that you go to work with every single day, um, you know, blood, sweat, tears with those guys. So, um, you know, anytime you score, you know, no matter who, who it is, you're excited. I love watching Rob Havenstein. Big time get off. I think you outraced him to the end zone, but he goes in untouched too. He's like looking for work. He can't find anyone to block. Allen Robinson's really the only guy who got a piece of somebody. Yeah, yeah, he, uh, he got off good. And, you know, it was man to man coverage, and Allen was able to take two and just, you know, let me get to the edge and, and, and get to the end zone. All right, so I think we need to uh, we need to double check the GPS technology. They had you at 19.45 miles per hour, according to the next year. That's pretty fast. It's top eight on the team this year in terms of ball carrier speed. Yeah, I've run faster. You uh, have run faster. I've, I've run faster, but uh, you know, it was only uh, I wasn't able to open up too much. So you know, maybe maybe down down the road I can hit twenty twenty one. You know what it reminded us of though, November twenty seventh, twenty twenty. Do you know where I'm going with this? My uh, rushing touchdown at North Carolina. For Number Notre two, Notre Dame, undefeated. It's the game of the week at uh, top 25 North Carolina. Third quarter tie game. I mean, it's not like exactly the same, but this is freaky close, right? It's freaky close, except that one we, we had practiced during the week and I knew it was going to be called. This one I did not know it was going to be called. You had no clue. Kind of caught me off guard. Wait, so when's the last time you repped this play that you scored on? We uh, we've repped it in practice, but we had a couple guys not practice this week, so um, you know I didn't know it was going to be in that personnel group. Um, the Notre Dame play, I knew was going to be called uh, for sure. So the other thing that's uh, familiar to me about that win over North Carolina, Kyron Williams scored three times in that game. Oh yeah, he uh, he also had LeBron shout him out after that game. Did he really? Yeah, what did he say? I think Kyron hit like the uh, LeBron celebration in the end zone, uh. and then LeBron shouted him out after the game. So. Um, that was a very fun game, and uh, yeah, Kyron went crazy. I had a touchdown there, and you know a lot of people picked us to get upset that week, so we all had a chip on our shoulder going to North Carolina. Looking forward to getting LeBron back to SoFi Stadium soon, and we need to get Kyron back in a Rams uniform. Oh, right? I can't wait. I cannot wait. He, uh, Rams fans are going to love him. The, the energy, the juice he brings. Uh, he was killing it in the preseason when he came back from his, his first injury, and then, you know, unfortunately, is very maybe first or second play of his NFL career um he got hurt again but you know he's the type of kid uh he's a fighter he's gonna come back stronger and and he's gonna be a great pro for years to come by the way I think 20 miles per hour on that run at North Carolina to your point about you've been faster yeah even with the ball in your hand I think that one you uh you topped out uh -oh. that was good um, where's the uh, football going? Speaking of celebrations, you didn't let it go. You didn't let it out of your grasp. You, you have to keep the first one. That was wise. Uh, you know, everyone told me, you know, you got to keep your first touchdown. And, you know, we've had some plays up, um, you know, past few weeks. And, you know, guys like Higby or, or Cup or someone's like, you got to keep the first touchdown. You know, don't give that ball away. Uh, I think even Coach Yarber, the receiver coach, um, I think he's mentioned that to me. So 
uh, yeah, I wasn't going to let that one up. Gave it to Berg, our equipment guy, and, uh, you know, they'll, they'll get it, you know, all taken care of for me. So, Ben, when you say we had some plays up, it seems like there were some looks that you might have found your way to the end zone on that your teammates were anticipating. Am I reading that correctly? Uh, you know, every Friday we have red zone install, and you, okay. you know when there's plays in uh, where you have a shot to score, and, you know, maybe we'll, you know, have a, uh, you know, kill it at the line of scrimmage if it's not the right look or something like that. So, um, but this game I, I didn't necessarily expect to score you know there's been some games in the past where I'm like oh we got you know this play up and it's great uh great one where I might you know get in the end zone here receiving touchdown next it's still there on the to-do list that's right that's will you right. enjoy that one as much or more you think uh you know every touchdown I'll enjoy I guess but uh receiving one will be nice but you know whatever however I can get in the end zone you know will be great yeah all right, granted it was the Panthers who are in a disrupted state. Let's just call it what it is. Um, but what does that mean for your team to get that victory, to get to 3-3 three and three going into your bye? You know, I think it means a lot. Um, you know, we had a, a tough couple weeks back-to-back, -back and um, to go into the bye week, you know, with a win you know, is, is always great. And, um, yeah, you know, every NFL game is a tough game. You know, you look at guys, you know, they have, you know, great players and, you know, on their side, we have great players on our side. To win in the, in the NFL is hard. Um, you know, I, I know you do this podcast with, with Coach McVay, and that's been a message he has. So, you know, every single Sunday, Monday, Thursday, whenever you play, you know, you're playing against great players who are, you know, at the top of their, you know, industry and what they do. So, um, you know, it's hard to win in, in the NFL, and, you know, to come out with a W is, you know, you can never take it for granted. You're a big fan of the McVay show? You watch? I don't watch, but oh. I know it's probably something he says. thought we had something there. Sorry. Sorry I didn't offer you a cup of coffee, by the way. You Sorry. don't mind, dude. How many have you had so far today? Uh, I had a dirty chai tea latte. Say it again? A dirty... A dirty chai tea latte. That's yeah. your go-to Starbucks? That was my first time ever getting it. Oh, okay. It was good. And how many stars? Give it like a... Out of what? Five? Five. I'll give it like a 3.8, 3.9. Well, that's specific. What's what's your go to? Like, what's your regular Monday morning? Um, depends. Like early in the season, if it's still hot out, definitely get like an iced coffee uh, with whole milk. If it's uh, cold out, you know, you're transitioning. Transition, now to yeah, hot, yeah, hotter coffee. Yeah. Um, back to the win yesterday. It, it makes me wonder, what do you feel like this group is capable of? Because um, I don't even think you scratched the surface. Am I right? Like, yeah, I think we have not seen four quarters of Rams football yet this season, have we? You're totally spot on. Um, you know, even watching the film this morning, you know, we got a lot of work to do. You know, there's plays that we left out there um, that we need to, you know, quite frankly, just be better. And, um, you know, we practice um, we practice hard, you know, all week and stuff like that. But, you know, I think we're just scratching the surface. And, you know, we're getting some guys coming back from injury and stuff like that. And I'm really excited to see, you know, where we go as a team. Speaking of injury, you work in tandem with the offensive line on a lot of the run designs. Have you ever seen anything like what they're going through right now? I mean, when you come back from this bye, they'll be starting their seventh different starting combination against the Niners in seven games. Yeah, it's, uh, it's unfortunate, you know. Um, first and foremost, you know, the guys have been through so much. Um, and I know the guys who are hurt right now are working their tails off to get back out there. But... Uh, you know, credit to the guys stepping in and, and, you know, playing in roles they might not have practiced at and, and stuff like that. Um, you know, I think it's a testament to those guys. And, um, yeah, you know, it, it's football. You know, things happen, guys go down, and, and other guys need to step up. And, um, you know, I think this next portion of the season after the bye, you know, you're going to see, you know, some great play from the O-line and, you know, they'll get comfortable with each other. But, you know, like I said, it's just unfortunate. Um, injuries happen. And, Right now, it just seems like injuries are happening, you know, at a faster rate in that group. One of those players on offense for the Rams that we feel like we're confident we're going to see back soon, perhaps as soon as San Francisco, is Van Jefferson, who's on injured reserve now, but is lined up to get back. What does it mean for the Rams offense when Van is back in your rotation? Yeah, I think it's going to be huge for us. Um, you know, everyone saw what he did last year. You know, he's... he's great athlete super fast and I think he's going to be able to stretch the field for us um you know do a lot for our, our passing game running game you know he, he's a great player and you know he's one of those guys who, who I mentioned he's not O lineman, but he's been working his tail off to get back and you know I don't know when it's going to be I, I'm not you know in those meetings or anything but um you know I hope it's soon because he's a tremendous player and he's really going to help help our team out what about what it means for you and your opportunities given the role that you've carved out in this offense yeah you know that's going to be up to uh you know, Coach McVay and, and stuff, but, you know, whatever role I'm given, um, you know, just going to go out there and, and, you know, play as hard as I can and, and do my job to the best of my ability. 
Good answer. Very diplomatic. <laughs> Wasn't expecting any different. Uh, but with the 49ers back in your sights again on the other side of the bye, I was reminded this morning about how Debo Samuel called himself a wide back. And I thought sitting down with you, we need to settle on a name for your role in this <laughs> offense. I'm going to suggest, I'm not proud of this, I'm going to suggest full Seaver. Full Seaver. Does that work for you? Can you do better than that? A full Seaver? Um, you don't have to do it on know, the spot. It, it works, yeah. I don't know on the spot. I wasn't prepared. Um, full Seaver. Let me ask you a few other questions. And if you come to something that you like by the end of the show, feel free to pitch it back to me. We'll see what the, the listeners have, too. Maybe uh, yeah, they, yeah. They can tweet suggestions. to add. Full Seaver is the nominee to beat. Yep. Um, before that Falcons game, though. Take us kind of inside the facility. You know, how does it happen reliving the sequence of events where Sean McVay comes to you with this idea? Yeah, I, uh, I show up. I get here, you know, pretty early in the mornings. Um, I, one of the, the assistant coaches walks by me. He's like, big role for you this week. And I'm just like thinking in my head like, oh, sweet. You know, got, got a lot up for me in the past game. Um, you know, I'm excited. Then, you know, we start the day off, um, you know, with like offensive meeting. And, and Coach McVay has been, you know, come to my office with me. And I'm like <laughs> – this can't be good, right? <laughs> like, you know, the, the the head guy wants me to go to his office, but um, you know, I sit down and it's like, you know, this is what we're gonna do, and you know, I was pretty excited. I think it, you know, fits my skill set, you know, pretty well, and you know, I, I'm different for a receiver. I like to hit people, so uh, you know, it, it's been fun. It's been a challenge. It's been able to learn different stuff. Um, you know that you know I played receiver for. I don't even know how long now and, and to be able to go in the box um kind of learn you know running back stuff off more offensive line stuff you know blocking techniques stuff like that uh it's been fun it's been you know quite a challenge but it's something that you know i enjoy doing i'm glad that assistant hinted at a big role for you because otherwise if sean calls you into his office and you have nothing to preface it your heart's probably skipping a beat right yeah in this industry you never know so i, I was like oh <laughs> we'll i don't see, think uh, you had done anything wrong to that point yeah but, yeah um not playing teams anymore do you miss the kicking game oh yeah i uh i really enjoyed that last year that was that was some of the most fun i've ever had playing football um special teams is you can run fast hit people um yeah i've never i i played kickoff return and punt return my freshman year at northwestern but that was it so i was never on a cover unit anything like that and then last year it was just like it was just so much fun for me and they're like hey you get to run as fast as you can don't get blocked and go hit someone i was like sign me up so <laughs> i do miss that the reason it comes to mind is because you're talking about all the extra work you have to put in from the running back lens from the offensive line lens to transition to this new opportunity right and i remember last year speaking with you how hard you were working to learn all the elements of the kicking game right like you're a rookie you're trying to learn mcveigh's playbook you're working with jody camillus like your days were as jam-packed as anyone in this facility now for different reasons it seems like it's much the same yeah yeah it's definitely uh you know it's a good thing i think when you're asked to do a lot and and learn a lot and have a you know each week um you know you have to study outside of the building mm -hmm. inside the building you have to come in early leave late um watch extra films so you know i think it's a good problem to have before we leave the kicking game how great was michael hoyt's 22 yard return yesterday you know i just saw it on film for the first time right before i came in here and he was rolling it was uh he, he had some good vision, made a good cut. Uh, I thought he was going to go all the way, you know, on the field. I did too, yeah. There, there's people behind me. You know, you're waiting to go out there on offense, so you're right there. Um, and, you know, there's people behind me. Get down, get down. And I'm, he just kept rolling, and I was like, I was hoping he was going to break one. If he's not the NFC Special Teams Player of the Week when we wake up on Wednesday, I'll be disappointed. Oh, me too. Um, I hope you don't mind me asking, but, like, I've seriously been never seen a fan base do a 180 on an individual like I think the Rams have for you, right? Like, I don't know how much of it you were aware of, but, like, they got on you a little bit last year. And I defended you. I think we had this conversation. I don't think it was fair for a seventh-round rookie who was thrust in a difficult spot to be taking any of that. Now you're their folk hero. How are aware of that are you, and where do you stand with that? You know, it, it is what it is. You know, last year, you know, there's some plays that – you know, I definitely would want back and, um, you know, I was just kind of thrown in the fire and I think it made me who I am today. Um, but you know, I kind of let go of like social media and all that stuff yeah. and, and I don't pay attention to it too much. Um, you know, I just come in every single day and, and get to work and, you know, all that extra noise is just noise. It, it really, you know, doesn't really do anything. Um, I think it can affect people um, if people let it affect them. And, uh, you know, for me, it was 
kind of before I like got got off it, it was extra motivation you know I, mm -hmm. I just wanted you know to get back to work and um you know prove people wrong prove myself right you know it was I probably can't say the f word but it was like you know f them uh just just get to work and you know this off season I don't know if I've ever had a better off season uh you know with my workouts diet you know every single thing um you know just working on my game so um, you know, that's just all extra noise to answer your question. And, you know, it's, it's, fans are great, but at the same time, um, you know, they're not in here with you, uh, you know, practicing. They don't, they don't really understand what we go through day in and day out. Mm -hmm. If that vocal minority was to issue an apology, like what form would you like that to take? Are you thinking like a note, a song, <laughs> flowers, like what would make things right? with those uh, who misread your contributions to the Rams in year one. You know, I'm good. I don't, I don't need an <laughs> apology, but, uh, you know, my Venmo. No, I'm just playing. <laughs> <laughs> Great answer. That was almost the first spit take in uh, Rams Revealed history. Um, what are your plans for the bye week? Get my body back. Um, you know, obviously playing you know, some fullback, playing a lot on offense receiver, um, taking some hits here and there. So really just rest, recover, yeah. and um, – we got a lot of season left, so you know you don't want to go travel too much or do anything. But definitely, you want to step away, um, refresh your mind, and, and definitely refresh your body. So I'm just going to stick around the area, and you know it's Southern California. You know we play in the best place you can play. So um, just hang out here. I'm, no offense, back home in Fort Wayne, Indiana, but there's not much for me back there. Uh, you know on the bye weeks, so just stick around here and enjoy the sun and and just relax. Fort Wayne's no Mishawaka, by the way. It's better than that. Yeah, no, just, that was a Fort Wayne's a good show. spot, but I can't. It's too far <laughs> flight. Can't, can't go back. <laughs> we'll revisit some Notre Dame stuff in just a second. Um, but knowing what's on the other side of the bye week, I wonder how it sharpens your focus. Because that next game at SoFi will inevitably be for control of the NFC West. Where are you with the rivalry with the 49ers? Um, we don't like them. They don't like us. Um, it's crazy. Like This will be my fifth time playing them. Three last year, including the NFC Championship. Yep. Five times and 20-some career games. So there's definitely bad blood. You kind of start getting to know the people across from you and, mm -hmm. um, you know, just want to win. That's all. You know, we, like I said, we don't like them. They don't like us. It's a physical game. And, um, you know, they got the best of us last time. But, you know, we watched the tape. Um, we're excited to get back out there and get to work. And, just compete, man. I think every single person in this building just wants you know, that opportunity to get back out there. We, we have a bad taste in our mouth from that one. Yeah. Where does that NFC Championship game rank for you among your favorite athletic moments? Uh, definitely up there. That was a crazy environment. Um, you know, it's just something that one of those games, you know, it was like crazy. You know, I, I'm fortunate to play, you know, in a handful of big games throughout my career, but that was definitely up there. Mm. All right, we'll finish this edition of Rams Revealed as we always do with three and out. It's our weekly segment with three final questions for our guest, Ben Skoranek. Uh, if you get all of them correct, you might remember I make a donation to the LA Rams Foundation on your behalf. No long division, don't worry. Um, but my first question is, what's going on in South Bend right now? They'll figure it out. They'll, they'll figure it out. They got the so. right people there. Yeah. Um, they got the right people there. And, you know, I've gotten to know Coach Freeman, you know, a little bit and, you know, I, I think he's going to be a great coach um, for Notre Dame. And they got, like I said, they got the right people to figure it out. You know, I, I know nobody's quitting there. And um, yeah. 16 14 loss to Stanford last weekend. They're 3 and 3, UNLV next. Uh, meantime, your other college stop, Northwestern, Ryan Field is getting a makeover, I saw. Some $480 million. Oh, yeah. It's going to be awesome. Some are calling it the house that Ben Skoranek built. <laughs> Definitely not. It's going to be the house <laughs> that. Uh, Pat Ryan built. He's a big philanthropist. I can't say that philanthropist? word. Philanthropist? Yeah, that's I what you. I was looking for. I, uh, you know, great guy. He's done a lot of great things for that community, and this is going to be the next great thing he does. Don't forget, you got to help me with Full Seaver. That's yes, right. Up there. Yeah, yeah. You gotta, um, all right, so we talked about college stuff. Let's go to question number two on three and out. What is your hottest take on the Halloween season? Do you have any strong Halloween opinions? Overrated same yeah not a big halloween guy i'm a big like thanksgiving guy though don't get me wrong but halloween is kind of like there me too halloween like way down my list maybe last but why does it get like a full month now that's my question it's, i mean it's like two months you know I, you see those halloween stores going up you know you go get groceries and then it's like boom halloween store it's like it's august <laughs> and my neighbors are disgusting 
like with just the vile death and darkness that yeah. we have to wake up to every day. Like, can we get on with the Christmas lights already? Right. Is, is where I'm Or at get some that. like turkeys out there or something. It's better than a whole month, like one twelfth of our calendar being devoted to this. Nonsense. And like pumpkins are, are like cool, but like the skeletons, all that. It's like yeah, it's just we don't, fall fest. Maybe two weeks, but Fine. you know, two months is too much. I knew I liked you, Ben. This is why you've been. Uh, I've been Team Skoranek ever since training camp of twenty twenty one. Final question here on three and out. I'm going to the bullpen here. Uh, you might remember uh, Ricky Hollywood um, from such smash hits as Ricky's Ram Jam, uh, and also the kickoff luncheon that uh, we had a couple couple weeks ago uh, Ben Skoranek was expecting uh, the folks from Allo to sit down with him before we went to Cincinnati right yeah. and maybe hook him up with some free gear instead it was table 27 with it was just with us. us yeah yeah uh, so you... final question belongs to Ricky Go ahead. yeah so you were pretty disappointed right um, but also I remember a conversation with with the three of us at that table saying I think maybe we were like maybe we could you could play fullback <laughs> or maybe you could score a touchdown do you, you know, I saw you did a selfie video after the touchdown, but did, was it edited? Did you cut off maybe like thanking JB and I or did anything like that? Yeah, I, I mean, I did like three retakes and I included you guys every single time. So they, they must oh, have cut they off. Edited yeah, yeah. That they, they definitely edited it. For okay, sure. okay, cool. Yeah. Well, you're welcome. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. yeah. Thanks for stopping by, Ricky, <laughs> for the first Rams Revealed cameo. <laughs> Check her out on uh, this week's Ricky's Ram Jam. Uh, ben, thank you for being here. Thank you for having some fun. Uh, proud of what you've accomplished, and I know uh, you're just getting started, and so are these 2022 Rams. Thanks for having me. Enjoy the bye week. I will. You too. Oh, I will. Travel locally, travel safely, heal up. Yes, sir. For Ben Skoranek, I'm JB Long, and this is Rams Reveal, presented by NFL All Day.